it was an unbelievable fight. I'll be honest with you, I was so exhausted after the Liverpool event. Um, I dozed off for a couple of hours, then woke up and watched on my mobile telephone. But I was kind of semi-sleep, but it was incredible. I couldn't get back to bed. I mean, couldn't get back to sleep for hours. And I'm still exhausted because I just flown back to Southampton, literally landed an hour ago. And uh, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. And Wilder, it's a massive credit to Wilder, the way he stayed in it. And Fury is something else. The Russians kept texting me saying that it was so theatrical that they reckon the two falls by Fury was purposely created to keep to keep idiots. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, it was amazing, man. It was amazing. And now it's very conclusive. It's serious, two defeats, two stoppages, and it's beyond any reasonable doubt that Tyson Fury is the guy, is the man. He went like spaghetti legs. Did you see that after that shot? Tyson went. So it's, it's always, I mean, I must admit, Fury has such a quick recovery after, after, after any punch. I mean, I've seen it. He's been dropped a few times in his career, and he seems to recover very quickly. That's a really good quality. And um, Wilder, I expected exactly how Wilder came out. I mean, um, he fought a good fight. You know, it's just, it's just levels are different. Tyson Fury had better idea, better chance, better technically, and all around awareness. And Wilder already jumped out of his skin in, in order to perform how he could to perform because he never fought anyone like Tyson Fury. And um, the style, his style was all wrong for Tyson Fury in terms of very comfortable for Tyson. He could predict that. that Wilder is a very telegraphy fighter, isn't he? The way he throws the punches. Tyson, with his experience and amateur pedigree, he could see it for mile coming, you know? So he could, he could, I mean, at times he made it, he made it more dramatic. I mean, that's how comfortable he was. You know, so it's it's just incredible fight. I mean, all credits to Wilder, and I do believe there's a Joshua fight still in him. Win, lose, or draw, he should fight AJ. Do you agree? He yeah. should yeah. He, he should fight AJ regardless because he's still a very dangerous man. Tyson Fury, arguably the best heavyweight on the planet at the moment, and losing to the best, no shame in it, you know? So it doesn't mean that he won't give a super competitive fight to AJ, especially AJ was very vulnerable and quite stagnant and robotic kind of in comparison to Usyk. And I do believe he will find it very difficult fighting uh, Tyson Fury as well. So I think that matchup is as exciting as Usyk against Tyson Fury, you know? Yeah. So I mean, we, we still have um, some great fights coming up. Yeah, no one's going to turn their nose up at Wilder and Tosh. No. That is just sensational, yeah. Um, in terms of Wilder, obviously... He didn't really cover himself in glory with the excuses that came out after the second fight and the way he kind of threw Mark Breland under the bus, if you will. But can we categorically say that for the maybe the first time in his career, he showed real heart and real guts that he's never had to show before? He has. And um, you see fighters are funny creatures, aren't they? They're very funny creatures. Every fighter reacts to the defeat differently. We've got this joke, which is a cliche joke. When they win, they are who wins. When they lose, the manager and the trainer lose. Fighter never, fighter never blames himself for any losses. I mean, normally they change the teams, they change the training camp. Manager is not doing the job properly. Maybe promoters throw him under the bus and all that stuff. But when they're winning, when they are winning, when they're on a winning streak, they don't remember about the team. Very rarely, you know. I mean, it's ungrateful business. And I tell you, as the manager and promoter and an advisor, it's a very ungrateful business. I learned not to fall in love with the fighters, you know. And I forgive Wilder because it's a massive defeat. And it's a big psychological shakeup after what happened to him with Tyson Fury. And obviously, he will be finding someone to blame and that towel. And also, I understand now why he was so angry with towel be throwing because he would fight till death. And you saw it yesterday. He had to be spucked out completely, um, powerless, 
uh, gutsless, completely unplugged Fowler was laying on the canvas. And that's the state he has to be in in order to call it, in order to call to, to call the fight off, you know? That's that's what I feel he knew that that's the state he would like to be for the fight to be over. And previous fight was slightly far off from that state as you saw it. But yeah, that yeah, that's a really interesting point actually that you say that Al, because so essentially Wilder needed to be at the zero percent that he was at when the referee raved it off, just to almost have that inner feeling in himself that he's been beaten and been beaten well. Completely, completely. Because as you saw in Liam Smith fight, and as you saw in Troy Williamson against Ted Cheeseman fight, round three, I thought Fowler was inches from inches away from stopping Liam Smith. It was looked like Liam was caught and he was in crisis. And I was like, whoa, it's over. Same as when Cheeseman climbed on Troy Williamson. I don't remember which round that was, but it was very one-sided. And look at the results, two stoppages. Just shows you that there's a fine line between a premature stoppage, which could really influence on potential outcome and on saving fighters' health. <clears throat> and I believe because Previous Wilder Fury fight got stopped. That's why Wilder regrouped and had the opportunity to perform the way he did. You know? Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. It's a funny old game, isn't it? Boxing. It is a funny old game. And like you said about them fights in Liverpool, it's the fact that someone can almost take punishment and look like they're on the verge of being stopped and still carry power throughout. And when you've got a yeah. fighter like Wilder who carries that power, I know what you mean there is almost a reluctancy to, to want to stop it. Just in terms of Tyson Fury, Al, um, did we learn anything that we didn't know about Tyson Fury? Do you know, Krasuk tweeted something funny. He said, loved the fight, extremely satisfied with the outcome, learned a lot about the guys, and both are a piece of cake for Usyk. That's what he texted. I can't wait, really. I can't, I can't, I, listen. Do I want AJ rematch next? Yes, I do. Interesting. Would, would I like to see Fury against Usyk? Yes, certainly. I mean, the heavyweight division is so exciting at the moment. Any configuration, Dillian White against Wilder, possibly, because Dillian is also vulnerable, also been stopped before, then came back. It's such an open top seven. I mean, AFA, Jack, Jack Bay lost yesterday as well. So it's so open. And it's Tony Yoko in the mix, Derek Chisora. Uh, I bypass um, Joseph Parker because I don't find his style exciting. I don't know why. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he has to be, he has to be gelled with someone, with a dancing partner that will really compliment him, you know? Someone maybe like Michael Hunter, you know? And, um, but otherwise, it's so wonderful. I mean, any fight, we're welcoming for any fight. So... Fury Usyk, very exciting. AJ Usyk, very exciting. AJ Wilder, fantastically exciting. I mean, it's wonderful. I mean, we, we are living in a great heavyweight time, so very privileged and lucky. No, mm. you are correct. Whatever sort of combination we get, there's always going to be some sort any, of form any, of entertainment. Anything. Yeah. Anything. Yeah, 100%. Anything. It, just in terms of, I want to know what you make about, and obviously, it's kind of heat of the moment, I suppose, because I think when Tyson went up to Deontay, he was on his stall at this point. But he's come out after and said that Deontay's not really given him the respect he deserves, considering the fact that they've shared, regardless of result, they've shared 33 rounds together. They've both knocked yeah. each other down, gone hell for leather. Um, just sort of your, I don't know, your thoughts, should I say, on the fact that Wilder is sort of still not seeming to give Fury that degree of respect Look, Tyson is a wind-up merchant. Everyone understatement, knows. understatement. Uh, yeah, every everyone knows that, and he's got great big heart, and he's. I can see he's a lover in life in general towards people. He's very friendly character, but he has to he has to keep business going. He winds himself up. He winds everyone around himself. He throws like this funny liners that wind people up. 
And I do believe Wilder is a nice guy as well. I mean, look, when you've been completely continuously put down, you can't really say you're not you're not Bible man, aren't you? Just when you hit on the right cheek, put your left. People don't live by these standards, you know. So Wilder had to defend himself and be kind of disrespectful in return. Because to be honest with you, catalyst of all trouble always Tyson Fury, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know it, so <laughs> it's, just, it's not like, oh, you're a wanker and blah, 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 and then you don't give me enough respect. That's really odd, isn't it? <laughs> so Tyson just keeps himself wound up on adrenaline. That's what he needs. He needs that thing. He entertains himself. He gets bored very quickly. I do believe he's got some sort of HDAD or whatever you call it, this kind of thing in him, you know, where he has to be wound up before the fight. Otherwise, all this quietness and boring, mundane shit, he just doesn't like it. He likes to be on his toes mentally, you know? And um, don't take it seriously. They talk to each other. They call each other on the phone. <clears throat> they they great. They, they, I've never seen animosity. Very rarely that people don't like each other behind the scenes. Very rarely. It's all business, man. Remember that. When they step through the ropes, it's a real thing. But outside, they have to wind each other up in order to make a good spectacle. Because, because if you don't have a grudge against your opponent, that might affect your performance, you know? So you just have to make him an idiot or I don't like you, you're twat. I want to beat you up. And then you go in there, you perform, and then suddenly you want to hug each other and everything because that was how sufficiently created. And yeah, this I mean, is the beauty about boxing, you know? So, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't read in what Tyson says about respect and disrespect. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, that's exactly what Liam said last night. He said he had to sort of hate Anthony Fowler for those eight weeks. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Liam Smith is an extremely stubborn character. He is the coarsest piece of sandpaper I have ever met in boxing. He would argue, you tell him black, he says white. You tell him white, he says black. He loves disagreeing. He loves arguing. He's a really, I reckon he's the most fired up character out of Smith Brothers. Massively. Yeah. I mean, second, second is Swifty, in my opinion. Then is Paul, and then Callum is almost like a subdued, quiet serial killer, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> so very know. interesting family. And and um, when I text Liam and I'm saying I'm bringing Coburn of ringside, what for? Why are you bringing that swat for, that fucking clown? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He had to straight away react. But when they saw each other before the fight in the foyer of the hotel, they were hugging each other, couldn't have another. Do you understand what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just boxing. It's a game. You just have to tune yourself up. Otherwise, it's pointless. 